Hello everybody, this is Usha Pandit, your MindSprings English teacher. Today, I am going to do the second part of the pre-primary series. If you haven't seen it, I think you should go and take a look. The last time I talked to you about who is the pre-primary child. So, if you don't have the time to see it, I am going to do a quick recap for you. It is about the child, his nature, which means what are we saying his nature is? He is curious, he is active, he is playful, he is imaginative and he is creative. That is the nature of all human beings. You see it in its most pure state in the child. So, if this is his nature, then what are the kind of tools that will help him to learn? It is not the classroom where he is sitting in a desk and reading and writing with a lot of other children because that is unnatural. But even if he is sitting in a classroom because we do not have enough open spaces nowadays, we can still change the activities so that there is activity, there is playfulness, there is creativity, there is a lot of thinking and there is curiosity. That is something that is completely within our control. So what do we need? What are the kind of lessons that we can create that will bring in and feed this kind of nature? That is the question. So you will find that if you tell them stories, make them sing songs, uh, do action rhymes, which is about activity there, games, um, if you make them laugh, the pre-primary child loves a laugh, right? The pre-primary child is a digital native. He was not born during your time. He is a child who is like, takes like a duck to water with digital resources like an iPad or a computer or a tablet or a cell phone. He is very comfortable. He is not afraid. Tomorrow, that pre-primary child is going to live in the age of artificial intelligence. So let us not forget all this and pull him back into the 19th century. So what should we do? This is our syllabus as far as children are concerned. They are, the other thing to remember is they are instinctive and natural language learners because at the age, before the age of two, they have mastered the mother tongue and sometimes two or three languages by the time they are three. So they are natural language learners. They are born to explore the world. They are not born to be sitting in one place. If you watch a child crawling, who's just started crawling, you will see the speed with which he crawls in order to explore the world around him. So if you, we keep these fundamentals in view, as far as the primary child is concerned, we will be able, pre-primary child is concerned, we will be able to cater to his needs better. Now let us see what we do in the classroom. Last time I told you that we'll talk about that. So when he enters the classroom, one of the first things we start with is the ABC, the alphabet. The alphabet is not something that we do with small children when they are born in, with our own mother tongues. So let us not do something that is unnatural. Let us do something that is natural with children, which is the spoken language that they can completely master because their brains are ready for spoken language. They are already showing you that. Instead, we put a pencil in their hand and we make them write and we make them read. This is unnatural. The actual age where everyone becomes brain ready for reading and writing is around seven years. And that is when the first place amongst schools in the world, the country called Finland sends its children to school because that is the time they are ready to read and write. I'm saying this because somehow there is more respect when you talk about Finland and there is a quick understanding in people then if I were to tell you scientifically, it is proved that seven years is the age for reading and writing. It doesn't mean you never let him touch a pencil. All I'm saying is bring down the quantum of reading and writing at this age because it is not 
their forte their forte is to speak and to understand and to listen and that is what we should be concentrating on but if you look at typical books of pre primary schools you will find the alphabet the letters of the alphabet from a to z going all the way for 26 weeks which means there is a forgetting cycle that takes over or you find a 1 to 20 or a 1 to 50 being the syllabus and there is a lot of writing so in one inch spaces you will find the number 4 in dotted lines be written 30 times this is tedious it is boring it is pointless and it is wasteful so these are the kind of activities that we need to stop now why am i saying this to you i'm saying this to you because when we do this we waste a lot of time and let's look at the time that the child has the child doesn't have oodles of time but before i do that let me just have a word about reading so reading has got caught in the clutches of phonics english is not a phonetic language english 75% of the words that are being used by the pre primary child is not phonetic and therefore he cannot read phonetically phonetics is only good for associating symbol to sound if you see two peaks and a sleeping line it's a or a something like that it's going to make an a uh, a uh, sound this is all that the child needs to know after that we need to move on can read phonetically some words and let them read it but you do need to do sight words with children which we have neglected for a long time coming back to time we think that pre primary child has got infinite time he does not if you look at the pre primary teacher in that school where he goes for 3 hours for 150 days in the year after settling down lunch time sleep time breaks play time free play etc she only has about 300 hours in the whole year with that child okay 300 hours in the whole year now if she is going to spend 150 of that in making that child write we have wasted a lot of productive time of that child in the pre primary how much time does the parent have the parent now the teacher has continuous time so she has got this child for 2 hours it's a stretch she cannot take a break from that because she can give the child few breaks but it's just small small breaks and then come back and come back and come back but if you look at the parent or the home the child has got all the, the rest of the time of of which let us say he is going to sleep 8 or 10 hours even then you've got a massive chunk of about 10 12 hours with you that you can use discontinuously so you don't have to do it one hour at a stretch you can do it for 15 minutes let the child go then do it again for 10 minutes 20 minutes so you've got a lot of time on your hands and i'd say anywhere from 1000 to 1500 hours is what the parent has so where is 300 where is 1200 or 1300 hours that parents have for 365 days therefore i argue that it has to be a partnership it cannot be where you plonk a child in school and allow the teacher to teach him everything under the sun in a matter of those 300 hours and you say we put him in school it's her job to teach him everything she does not have the time she needs to choose her activities in such a way that she uses the strengths of the class which is your child now has 20 other children to interact with that's the strength of the class which you cannot do at home so she needs to create activities that will give you give the child that advantage right so that's the big advantage in school which he is going to use for your child there are other activities teacher inputs that she can give probably better than you can at home and she needs to concentrate on those activities if we are going to expect her to do everything else it is not a partnership 
it's a one sided show and who is going to be harmed in this whole process the child so instead of the child getting 1500 hours of learning time with all the adults that he has around him he ends up getting 300 hours so you have short changed him almost by a fourth or a fifth of that time that he really deserves so have a good think about this the other thing I wanted to talk to you was the child's needs now a child needs all this activity humor all of these things but he also needs to think he is a critical thinker he is a seeker of knowledge he wants to see cause and effect he wants to see um, for example how links are made between different things he wants to imagine by using a what if he wants to discover things so I'll talk to you about a small experiment that uh, Jessica my um, person who's assisting me with the book has a five-year-old and she did it at home so we asked her to ask the child what happens if we freeze small bits in a tray like jam honey water oil jelly etc the excitement of that child and putting it into the fridge and removing it and looking at it and then keeping it for a day to find out if how many of those go back to being in their original form was amazing and there was everything that she wanted to freeze after that to check so that is now the scientific temperament that has been built into the child because you did one experiment at home with that child in the kitchen now this can only be done by parents at home they cannot be done by the teacher in the classroom with 20 children as her responsibility so this is what I want you to understand it's a partnership so there are several things you can do at home for example if you look at um, engineering okay you look at now now they progressively call it the stem in the United States they have found that you allow children to work with their hands and they discover a lot of things like balance and symmetry and you can for example look at shapes if you're going to give them a bunch of toothpicks and then some jelly sweets that you can poke them into you can actually create 3d shapes which they will create themselves you really do not have to give them any instructions they will also find out what are the um, combinations that you have where you cannot make those shapes and that's learning right if you fold a paper several times a small strip and put end you know tape it end to end you'll find you create square and triangle and hexagon shapes there's no reason why children should not try that these are not areas where the children cannot understand what you are saying so a three four five year old is an intelligent being now when you put that shape together there is an excitement because it's something the child has done you might want to help him to tape it at the end or glue it at the end that's all you need to do but there is an excitement there is now a need to cut every kind of paper and check what shapes happen and that's what you want happening you want that curiosity that seeking you want all of that to burgeon in a way in which the child is now active alive compare this to writing that number 4 30 times it's a tragedy compare now the child writing it in school then giving it that for homework to be finished at home and probably someone driving him to a tuition teacher to finish those fours there is a colossal waste of intelligent time and I would really like everyone to have a good think about this as I said children love to laugh right so if you are going to let me read to you a couple of poems that they need to look at they don't have to be the Jack and Jill Baba Black Sheep forever those are old they are British you need to change them or modernize them if you are using it but let me talk give you one there was a girl called Miss Ray who sat on a couch all day knitting a sweater in grey out crawled a cockroach she saw it approach screaming Miss Ray ran away so it's a simple poem they can understand it and it's funny you may not find it hilarious but they are going to probably roll off their desks in laughter look at another one here walking through the jungle 
deep and dark you see i heard a strange noise wondered what it could be i looked around and saw a massive elephant who was just trying to tie up his red striped underpant now if you say underpant children are falling all over the place so you have great fun in making them laugh when learning becomes joyous children start having a good time and they associate learning with a lot of fun i have written a series of pre primary books to help to foster this process because a lot of people do not know how to do it i am going to talk about that in my next video so be tuned in to these videos this is that will be the third part and i will go into detail i want you to write in the comments box if you want to get a brochure of those books that are going to hit the market soon and i will send you a sampler so until we meet again make sure that you enjoy your pre primary child spread this video around to all those who have small children and to schools who teach them and until we meet again keep smiling subscribe press the bell notification and put your comments in the box thank you